there are four functions and two attitudes, not eight functions. There are, however, eight function attitudes, but by their nature, they aren't things that can just be used. As a thinking type, I can use sensation, but as an introverted thinking type, I don't use thinking and the extroverted attitude by my very nature. TI would maybe only acknowledge the information of TE for the sake of abstracting away from it, but TE is not a mere process, just like TI is not a mere process. It is an overall preference, that is, in and of itself, TI is a preference, just like the other function attitudes. Let's say an individual is collecting a set of facts through inductive reasoning. Many in the typology community would say that they're using TE, but this is not true, because TE is not a mere process, nor is it merely inductive reasoning. At bottom, fundamentally, essentially, constituently, and inherently, TE is a preference. It is more or so the prioritization of inductive reasoning rather than the mere use of it. TI types can definitely use inductive reasoning. Again, TE is a preference precisely because the attitude of extroversion is applied to it. When an attitude is applied to a function, it doesn't change the entire nature of the function. It only changes or rather adds one constituent to that function by its own self. The function doesn't primarily have. The function doesn't primarily have the constituent of predilection or orientation. I don't mean this in an absolute sense though, because there does, for example, exist a thinking type, type who is oriented toward thinking. However, at bottom, thinking is a process over an orientation. Introversion and extroversion are also processes, but they are first and foremost orientations over processes. When an orientation of consciousness or unconsciousness is applied to a function, the constitution of that function changes into a preference because the attitudes are the basis of Jung's typology. As Jung connoted on occasion for a function attitude to be a function attitude at all, deciding weight has to be placed on it. A TI type can indeed collect a set of facts via inductive reasoning. However, the deciding weight is usually more so placed on the deductive basis of the facts rather than the cogency of the facts themselves. Now, as implied before, thinking on its own is a, is a process. So, for a TI type to quote-unquote use TE, they'd have to prefer it rather than merely use it at all. But given the entire nature of one's type, that is not really possible. Hence, a TI type does not use TE. And that goes the same for other function attitudes and their opposing respective attitudes. It's not that they aren't able to, it's that they literally don't by their very nature. I would even say it's pretty much that they're, that they're not able to as well, but I don't want to get too hasty here. And this is also due to the fact that TE and TI aren't separate elements. It's true that we do use the other attitude, but we use the attitude for the opposing function, hence the function axes. The function axes give rise to the ultimate reason as to why we use only four functions instead of all eight cognitive functions. Typologist Asura Syke stated that we already have all of our needs met with the four function models in terms of the general nature and structure of one stack. We already have an extroverted judging function in our stack. We already have an introverted perceiving function in our stack. We already have an extroverted perceiving function, and so on. This also creates perfect symmetry within the stack, which makes the other four cognitive functions totally unnecessary. If you are a TI type, you don't need TE. You already have FE. Take the balance and symmetry in an INTJ's stack, for example. NI and TE creates balance by consisting of introverted perceiving and extroverted judging. And likewise with the unconscious lower functions in the stack, FI and SE, which is introverted judging and extroverted perceiving respectively. The INTJ does not need another introverted judging function or another extroverted perceiving function because they already have their worldview set out for them. A Sora Sykes example illustrates this principle. This is the same reason why an INTJ, for example, can't have repressed introverted sensing compared to extroverted sensing, because the need for objective irrationality is still there. And by using a subjective irrational function as a dominant cognitive function, then objective irrationality is completely ignored. It is repressed. 
And this is why the cognitive functions make a lot of sense to me in a four function stack model, because this is perfectly aligned to make it so we have all of our cognitive needs met. The same fundamental concept applies to all other types. This leads to my next point that the function attitudes are habitual world views. For example, FE is not accommodation in itself. It is a lens of consciousness or a worldview that is characterized by habitually preferring harmonious order between things and people. Accommodating FI types definitely do exist. They just don't see the world in the same way as FE types do. And in order for the eight function model to be valid, we must simplify or even oversimplify not just the definitions of the functions themselves, but also the entire nature of Young's typology. In essence, a function attitude is a constituent fundamental basic worldview that has an exclusive way of operating. This means that the overall result of the other attitude of a function can be mimicked, but only through the lens of one's own type. Or at least it doesn't mean it, but it implies it. For example, a TI preferring type can mimic the results of TE through TI. Even then, as previously implied, the TI preferring type can use the extroverted judging aspect of their function axis, which is extroverted feeling, because their cognitive needs are already met. And as Asura Sykes stated, the attitude of these four functions is what separates how these functions work. A criticism of these arguments in favor of an eight function model is superfluous on the grounds that one would only be appealing to a completely different system other than Jungian typology or MBTI that doesn't even necessarily have more validity than Jungian typology or MBTI.